Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 66. Hey, if you want to download this workbook file and follow along, or the PDF file, click on the link below the video. Hey, last two videos we talked about hypothesis testing and confidence intervals for the difference between two population means when sigma was known. In this video, we want to talk about building a confidence interval for the difference between two population means when we don't know sigma population standard deviation from either one of the populations. Hey, guess what? Just like in earlier chapters and videos, when we don't know sigma, what do we use? We use the t distribution. Now, for a confidence interval, since we're talking about the difference between two population means, we're going to go out and get two samples. x bar 1 minus x bar 2. That will be some amount representing the difference. And then we'll add and subtract what's called the margin of error. Now, in the last couple of videos, when we calculated standard error, standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar minus x bar, we knew sigma. Here we don't know sigma. So what do we use? S. Remember, S is the sample standard deviation. S squared is the sample variance, right? So in the last couple of videos, we took population sigma and divided by the n, right? And took the square root after we added them. But here, since we don't know sigma, we use our sample variance. Now, this will be our estimate for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar minus x bar for the t distribution. Remember, when we're calculating margin of error, if this is the standard deviation or standard error, we have to multiply it by t, which represents number of standard deviations. Once we get our margin of error, we just add it and subtract it, and boom, we get our confidence interval for the population difference. Well, you know, this looks exactly like what we did in the last couple of videos, except we had z and then we knew sigma, right? So this isn't uh, very difficult to calculate. However, we're going to have one extra calculation. And if I go to the next page in our PDFs, the thing that makes this calculation hard is degrees of freedom. Oh, man, that looks totally complicated. But notice we're going to, be have, we're going to have to use the variance and the sample size multiple times. So the key to this formula is that we're going to build a little template in Excel to calculate variance from the first sample divided by n from the first sample. And in a separate cell, we'll calculate variance from the second sample and divide it by the sample size for the second sample. We'll have these two numbers in cells. And notice, since we have to use them a lot, it'll make this calculation much easier. Now, there's three little notes here. And note two is just what we mentioned, Excel hint, because the variance divided by n is used so often, we'll use a, what's called a helper cell and calculate this and then refer to it in formulas with cell reference. Now, two other hints. When we're making this calculation, oftentimes we're going to get some integer and some decimals. We're always going to round down, because that'll give us a more conservative interval. Now, something about this formula. This this formula is more complicated. If we were to look down here, this is a formula we're not going to use. This formula only works when you can assume that the population standard deviations are the same. This formula works in all cases. Formula works whether the standard deviations are equal from the population or not. Now I want to jump over to Excel and look at an example. Now, we mentioned this exact example in our first video for this chapter. We're going to compare the miles per gallon for imported compact cars and domestic compact cars. We obviously went out and got a sample. And we want to calculate the mean for each, the point estimate of the difference, and then a confidence interval to estimate the population difference. So here's our example. A recent EPA study compared highway fuel economy of domestic and imported compact cars. A sample of 20 imported compact cars revealed a mean of about 36 miles per gallon with about a standard deviation of 3.4. For the domestic compact cars, again, we had a sample of 20. The miles per gallon were about 33.8 and the standard deviation of 2.33. We're going to assume that the samples are independent. They're not related in any way. And the distributions for the samples are normal. 
at a 95% confidence level. Construct a confidence interval for the population difference between imported auto MPG and domestic auto MPG. Now here's our formulas off to the side, but let's go ahead and get busy calculating. Let's first calculate the sample size, so equals count because we have numbers. And notice, one, two, one, two. Very important that we keep the ones and the two straight because our calculations will depend on it. So I'm going to highlight the first one. And unlike last video when we did a similar example, notice that this column and this column are next to each other, and those are relative cell references. So when I Control Enter and copy it over, if I put it into edit mode with F2, you can see, sure enough, the relative range of cells moved. And now we can calculate our n minus 1. Now notice, for our degrees of freedom, sometimes we're going to need n, and sometimes we're going to need n minus 1. So we're going to make the calculating of this easy by calculating each one of the pieces in separate cells. So here, I'm going to go equals n minus 1. Control Enter, and I can copy that over, because that's a relative cell reference, F2. Now our sample mean equals average. Highlight the range for the first sample, Control Enter, and copy it over, F2. So we can see that that moved relatively. All right, so 36.52, 33.83 miles per gallon. So the question is, is the difference between the significant or is it insignificant? Well, we're going to build a confidence interval that will help us decide. Sample standard deviation equals STDEV, and we're going to use the S, because of course this is a sample. Highlight relative cell references, Control Enter, and copy it over. If I put this one into edit mode with F2, you can see, sure enough, it got the correct domestic MPG. Sample variance, now we square. And I could use the function to go look at these, but I'm going to simply go, hey, equals the standard deviation, caret 2. That will square it and give us our variance. Control Enter and copy it over. So we have the two variances. Now, here is the Excel part of it that makes uh, something complicated like this much easier. So we're just going to calculate that little bit. The variance for each sample divided by the n for each sample. So equals variance divided by the sample size n. Control Enter, those are relative cell references, so I can copy it over. If I put it in edit mode with F2, I can see, sure enough, whoop, it's got the right variance and sample size. Now let's go calculate our point estimate, our best guess for the population difference. Oh, hey, we're going to take and make sure it's 1 minus 2, right? We're going to take the first one minus the second one. That's the MPG for imported compact cars minus the MPG for domestic compact cars. And when I hit Enter, it looks like there's a point estimate of 2.69 miles per gallon difference. And since we took the first one and the second one, it looks like our point estimate is that the imported is 2.69 miles per gallon higher. All right, so the standard error, here it is. It's similar to what we did last time, the square root of the variance divided by n plus the variance of the second divided by the sample size of the second, except for here we're using our sample variances. So you ready? And let's notice something here. We're adding this. So just like we did in last video when we calculated standard error with population, we did square root and then the sum of those. Because notice that little bit right there is right there, and this little bit is right there. So let's do it. Equals square root. That's this part. Now inside, I'm going to say the sum. And now because these two little bits, same as there, are right next to each other, I simply highlight them. Close parentheses. You know, we definitely could have uh, used parentheses and pluses or, or just done the pluses. But I kind of like the sum because when I look at it, I know it's the square root of the sum. Now I'm going to close parentheses and Control Enter. The estimate of the standard deviation of the distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 for the t distribution. Now, degrees of freedom, that's this formula. We can even bring this over here. 
All right, now I'm going to notice something up in the top. I'm adding, and that thing is right there, and that little bit is right there. So if I just sum it and square it, that'll be the top. Then I'm going to do a division. And because I'm adding down here, I'm actually going to use the sum function again. Now notice that little bit is that 0.58. So I'm going to click on that cell and then square it and divide by our n minus 1. And then we simply add it to the second bit before the sample 2. So you ready? Equals sum. That's this part right there. So I'm simply going to add these two numbers. Close parentheses. Caret 2. So right here it has a 2, so we're going to square it. Divided by, and now I'm going to use the sum again. We don't have to. You could use parentheses down here and use a plus symbol, but I'm going to use the sum function. Now that little number 1 is going to be variance 2 divided by n. Oh yeah, that's that. Square divided by n minus 1. So ready? Boop. Caret 2 divided by r, n minus 1. Now that's number one. I could use a plus symbol, but I'm going to use a comma here. Because inside the sum function, you can put as many little things as you want. I'm going to put my second thing to add, which is right that whole little bit right there. Boom. Caret 2. That's that so far. I just need to divide it by n minus 1. Divided by n minus 1. So by having our little helper cells here, it certainly makes this formula less difficult to construct. Close parentheses and Enter. So degrees of freedom, remember degrees of freedom helps us choose which t distribution to look at. When we use our t function, we will use that degrees of freedom. Now remember in our notes we said we want to round down to the 33 to be more conservative. Well guess what? The t functions automatically do that, so we do not have to round this. Now we'll get to our t function right down here. But first, we need to talk about our confidence interval alpha and alpha 2. Well, our confidence even interval was given as 0.95. Enter. That makes alpha equals 1, 100% minus 0.95. That'll give us 5%. And since we're going to be talking about two tails, upper and lower, I'm going to calculate the upper tail probability. Hey, I'm going to take that, divide it by 2. All right, so now we can calculate our t. Remember, that's our estimate for st number of standard deviations. Equals t dot. And when we're calculating a number, in our case a t, it's the inverse. The disk calculate the probability. So I'm going to take t inverse probability. Well, remember, these functions go from negative infinity all the way up to whatever t we have. So I, I don't want to click this one. I want to say 1 minus that. That'll give us 97.5% or decimal 0.975 decimal there. That will be perfect. Comma and the degrees of freedom. Lucky for us, this t function automatically will truncate this. If you were to go look at help, it tells you that. Close parentheses and Enter. So our estimate for number of standard deviations for our confidence interval is 2.0345. Now our margin of error. Remember, if I move this out of the way here, we already have our point estimate. Boom, there it is. And I need to add and subtract. So I have some amount above and some amount below. That's our margin of error. So what do I do? I take, oh, the t times the standard deviation. Estimate of our standard deviation times number of standard deviations. So check this out. Our margin of error equals number of standard deviation. That's our t times our standard error. And that's in miles per gallon, right? 0.928 miles per gallon. So it's going to be 1.88 margin of error in miles per gallon that will add and subtract the upper. So you're ready, the upper equals, and there's our point estimate. And this is the upper, so I'm going to add margin of error. Boom, there's the upper, 4.58 miles per gallon equals, and there's our point estimate of the difference, minus the margin of error, and Enter. So it looks like our best estimate for our confidence interval is that we believe that the population 
difference is between 0.8 miles per hour and about 4.58 miles per hour. Now remember last video we mentioned if zero is not in our interval, if we were doing hypothesis testing with confidence intervals, then we would say there was a significant difference. Now we can say this a few different ways. We are 95% sure that the population difference between imported compact auto MPG and domestic compact auto MPG is between 4.58 and 0.81 miles per gallon. We are 95% sure that the population difference between imported compact MPG and domestic compact MPG, notice that's exactly what we set up here, but the end is different, is 2.69 with a margin of error of about 1.89 miles per gallon. Remember, though, we do run a 5% risk that our population difference is not in our interval. So in this video, we saw how to do this amazingly complicated formula for degrees of freedom. And we made it easier on ourselves by making sure that we set it up 1, 2, and made all of our pre-calculations, all the little pieces here, and then put it all together to calculate our confidence interval as an estimate for our population difference when we don't know sigma. All right, we'll see you next video when we'll do the same example, but with hypothesis testing. All right, see you next video.